Shalom. I'm giving all praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Yahweh Hakodash. Say double honors to our apostles and elders, Harry Great Millstone, peace and blessings to the Lord's hopefully elect. So I just wanted to briefly read Ezekiel 38. You can type in Great Millstone, Ezekiel 38. There's more brothers who go break it down in depth. And, you know, we covered it a number of times. I just wanted to speak on it as well because this is the time we're living in. This is the wars of room, ru wars and rumors of wars. This is the war drums beating, but the end is not yet. Still got some major prophecies to happen, such as martial law and above all the the, the RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast. And you should be asking right now. You should be observing if you listen to any other group outside of Great Millstone. You should be observing. What it is that they're teaching right now. Are they going into prophecy as we speak? Are they talking to you about the current events as of right now? These are the things that they should be telling you. If they're not, then you should probably observe to see that maybe they're not the true prophets. Because this is what this is, you know. Ezekiel 38, Ezekiel 38. This is, this is how we conversate now amongst the brotherhood. So... Ezekiel 38 says, And the word of the Lord Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against God, and us uh, like the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. So, so the land of Magog is Russia. I have an ancient map here. There's multiple ones, and they all, each one's maybe it's slightly different, but with uh, with all those basically agreeing on a lot of what they would deem the locations, you know, this is what we have to go off of. So Russia is considered God, and it says Meshach and Tubal as well. Today, we know it as Russia in the ancient. That's what their land was. Now, those are the sons of Japheth, and Japheth had inhabited those lands at one point. Until the Edomites came in there and moved them out. So, if you're looking at that and say, oh, those are the Japhet nations, it's, it's talking about the land. The land, because this is a future prophecy. All right, this hasn't, this actually hasn't happened yet. And this is, well, I'm going to highlight the point where the confusion for some Israelite groups to say that this, some, some, well, we heard at least one group teach that this is going to happen in the kingdom. But no, it's actually happening right now as we speak, and this is the breakdown of it. So, Magog, Meshach, and Tubal. That's the inhabitants of uh, Russia. And verse 3, And say, Thus said the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I will turn thee back and, and put hooks into thy jaws, and will bring thee forth, all it's like in all thine army horses and horsemen all of them clothed with all sorts of armor even a great company with bucklers and shields all of them handling swords so when the lord said he's going to put hooks in our jaws it means he's going to work on his mind as we understand in the scriptures the lord works off the minds of the kings this is how he operates this is why the scripture said he ruleth in the kingdom of men as proverbs 16 says the preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord you got Proverbs 21 the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rid of the rivers of water he turneth it whithsoever he will so he's the Lord is saying that for the leader of Russia in this case Putin really all the world leaders he's working off their minds to achieve his will and Zephaniah chapter 3 says that his determination is to gather the nations so every move the step that's happening now is to fulfill prophecy so verse and and him gathering his army with all sorts of horsemen and armor the great company that's everything in their military might that they put on display when they display their formations their tanks Whatever each country does, that's their way of showing off to the next country of what they're capable of. Okay? And, you know, like, if you listen to battle rap, Jake likes to, they talk like to talk gun talk. 
for the most part, they're all saying the same thing, which is I'll blow you away with the weapons that I have. But they fancy it and put it in the music to make it sound, uh, you know, cool and tight. And that's what they do. That's what they call it a gun talk. Well, when you do, when you a leader of a nation, these countries, they don't have to they don't have to talk about gun talk. They just show their missile. They show they flex their armory because they everybody understands universally what a nuclear missile missile is capable of. World leaders understand what tanks are capable of, etc. But really, it's the nuclear missiles that's the new weapon that's being talked now. All they have to do is go up to a podium and say, "We have developed a missile that's able to bypass defense systems, put the mic down, and walk off," and that's enough to uh, to cause, you know, the octagon, uh, uh, all these countries to quote what they say, try to verify the information, at the same time work on their defense systems, tighten up, etc. They don't take those lightly. That's how they communicate. It's on a higher level. Verse 5, he says, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. So these countries, right, Persia today are the Iranians. You can even look it up. Um, I forget which president it was, but at one point he said we should uh, we want to call ourselves Persians. I'm sorry, we want to call ourselves Iranians. So the the Persians are Iranians. I forgot what year that was. And then you got the land of Ethiopia, and you, it says Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. So all these nations are going to go to war. Now, when you look up relationships between Iran and Russia with Ethiopia and Libya, you'll see that for quite some time now they have relations, they have agreements. Right. It says, verse 6, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Tagarma of the north quarters and all his bands and many people with thee. Go back to the map. Now, Gomer and to to Tawagmar is talking about Turkey. I know there it says Romania, but Gomer and to Togarma is as you can see in that yellow right the connected it's talking about turkey and just so happened here i can pull it up so not long ago in september turkey asked to join the brics nation brics stands for brazil russia india china and I believe South America, I mean, uh, South Africa. Right, so Turkey wants to join the BRICS nation. The only thing is Turkey is a part of NATO. NATO was originally formed to combat the Soviet Union, which was Russia, okay, the USSR. The uh, uh, Soviet Union has um, been disbanded, but yet NATO is still staying. Why? Because that's the Lord gathering the army together. But Turkey is a part of NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. America is a part of NATO. Okay, the BRIC nations are all outside of NATO. Okay, Turkey is a part of NATO, but it says Turkey wants to join the BRICS nations. Is that coincidence? No, it's not. It's prophecy. It says Turkey bids to join BRICS and push to build alliances beyond the West. All right. Well, let me read. Okay, uh, you can look it up, but it says Bloc says to discuss expansion at summit in Russia in October. Turkey's been frustrated by the lack of progress in bid to join the EU. So Turkey is talking about joining BRICS, which means they would have to leave NATO. That's prophetic. So verse 6 says, Gomer and all his bands, that's Turkey. The house of Togarma of the North Quarter is Turkey. And all his bands. And many people with thee. So this is prophecy happening. These nations are going to be joined together. It says, Be thou prepared, and prepare thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee. And be thou a guard unto them. A guard unto who? Well, the big, the big bad bully is Russia. The, the, it, this, the, the country Israel as well as America wants to invade Iran so bad, right? Which is Persia. The only thing that's stopping them is Russia. The Russia, the, the government, the 
a union that Russia have with Iran. Otherwise, because they want that oil, right? They want that access to that oil because of that land of Iran is one of the main sources of oil. And Esau knows that if he can get control of that, then he can basically control the world. But Russia is there as a protect, as a protect, you see? So that's why these devils are treading somewhat lightly because they know at the end of the day they have to deal with Russia. All right. So Russia is a garden to them. OK. All of these countries are in agreements with Iran or Persia. So if it gets too dangerous, they are going to have to join in, which means NATO is going to have to join in. And then it's going to lead to World War Three, which is all prophetic anyway. Verse eight, it says, after many days, thou shalt be visited. In the, in the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have always been waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm and uh, thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. Thus said the Lord Yahweh, it shall also come to pass at the same time thou uh, shalt things come into thy mind and thou shalt think in evil thought. And what is that evil thought? It's going to go on to say that it's time to go to war. And part of that evil thought as well is Putin wanting to rebuild or reform what? The Soviet Union. He wants to bring it back. That's what the, the conquering of Ukraine was all about. Just look it up. He said he wants he wants to bring back the Soviet Union. He wants to go back to the old days. Right. That's an evil thought. Yeah, that didn't just come into his mind. Yeah, how about Shimei Shah put that in his mind? It says, and thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. That's talking about America. Uh, the reason America is known as the land of unwalled villages because she's known as the virgin daughter of Babylon. Virgin means she has been touched. The land of the people in the land of America are at, at ease because of pride. They never had to deal with American soil. I mean, American blood, uh, blood being shed on American soil. Places in other countries, they actually have to practice and rehearse uh, sheltering and drills etc because they're so used to being bullied by other countries like america everybody in that country has to be un has to understand politics have to understand uh what's going on in the world they can't afford not to because of their situation whereas people in america since they have had to go so long without having to worry about war they don't know the f they, they a lot of them can't even spell war they don't know the first thing about what's going on in the middle east because they don't know any better so it's the land of unwalled villages because in their eyes, who, who's going to attack us? Nobody's going to attack us, right? Verse 12, to take a spoil and to take a prey, to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, which have golden cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land, Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish with all the young lions thereof shall say unto thee, are thou come to take a spoil has thou gathered thy company to take a prey to carry away silver and gold to take away cattle and goods to take away a great spoil now Sheba and Dan are sons of Cush which Cush are the Ethiopians and we already read how Ethiopia and Persia right and and Magog are in agreement Tarshish I tend to forget Tarshish is the son of Japheth. Right? Let's go to the map. Let's see if it's. See if we got. Tarshish. I guess it's not on here. But Tarshish is the son of Japheth, which Japheth is. I'm sorry, Japheth inherits, uh, inhabits that land of Magog. And it said, what it said, 
and the merchants of Tarshish. So the agreement with the the nations that is an agreement, Ethiopia, right? Sheba, Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish. So the agreements of the uh, Russians. Verse 14. Therefore, son of man prophesied and said to God, thus said the Lord Yahweh, in that day when my people of Israel dwelleth safely, shall thou not know it? So here's where Jake believes that it's talking about in the kingdom because of what he what the Lord is about to say. Verse 15, and thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, which is Russia, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army, which is going to be their fighter jets, etc. It says, and thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land that the heathen may know me. When I shall be sanctified in the Ogag before their eyes. So Israel, uh, the Russians are what? Going to eventually go into what? The land of Israel. Right? Now it says against my people of Israel because you have Israelites in the land of Israel. There's actually Hebrew Israelite communities in the land of Israel. Now mind you, the World War Three, like when the Lord said he's gathering the nations to come to war, the land of Israel, that's going to get touched. But you have Israelites there, and you're also going to have some of the elect in there. Right? Verse 17, Thus said the Lord Yahweh, Art thou of whom I have spoken in old time by my servants, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years, that I will bring thee against them? And it shall come to pass at the same time when God shall come against the land of Israel, because talking about the land, Said the Lord Yahweh that my fury shall come up in my face. Because the Lord is still going to defend his elect. Remember, Yahweh Shah is coming in the midst of World War III. He's gathering the nations together for his anger. And when the missiles ultimately start flying on all four corners, because all it takes is one to shoot them off, for the next person to shoot them off, and then for everybody to just unload everything they have. Because they understand the effects of World War III. They understand all it takes is one missile to be shot for it to be over. Because you, you're not going to wait to see the damage. Because you understand the, the effects of missiles. You don't you don't wait to see the damage to say, okay, launch the next one. You let it all go. Right? And that's why these are so sensitive times. Because all it takes is somebody to press the button and for it to all kick off. Because they know once those nuclear missiles hit your land, there is no going back. There's no redemption for that place. It's over with. So you're just going to let them all fly. And that's what's currently keeping, you could say, war from settling now, which is all the will of the Lord. But if everybody in the room has a gun, okay, if everybody in the room has a gun and the room is full of dynamite and TNT and the slightest spark will set off a chain of events, that's going to keep everybody at bay currently right but it's going to be pressed verse 19 it says for my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel oh yes and we you can just tell now why the Lord is going to bring up bring uh, an army against the land of Israel because of what what those devils are doing right now Verse 20, so that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of heaven and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, said the Lord Yahweh. Every man's sword shall be against his brother and I will plead against him with the pestilence and with the flood and I will rain upon him. And upon his bands and upon many people that are with him an overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself. And I will be known in the eyes of many nations and they shall know that I am the Lord Yahweh. Right. And that's going to all be done by way of Yahweh Shah returning on what the world calls a UFO, a giant chariot. So this is all happening as we speak. This is prophetic. The reason why certain Israelites may say that's talking about in the kingdom is because they're saying my people Israel. So, you know, they broke down that we're going to be in the kingdom and then 
somehow they're going to gather an army under our noses to try to fight us and we're immortal? No. All right. It's talking about right now because you have Israelites in the land of Israel. Like I said, you even have Hebrew Israelites in the community. You have elect in the land of Israel and they're about to get caught up in the midst of war and the Lord's going to deliver his elect. You see? And then simultaneously, you're going to have Jacob's trouble that's going to occur in the land of Babylon, America, and different parts of Europe. You know, primarily in the land of Babylon. But them Jakes that's over there in the land of Israel, they're about to actually be caught in the middle of war. And that's why the Lord's going to deliver his elect. You know? But this is all happening as we speak. None of this is coincidence. Turkey wanting to join uh, the uh, Gog, Magog. Um... You know, Persia being the Iranians, uh, uh, these countries, uh, God being a guard unto them. This is all prophetic according to the scriptures. And I just wanted to briefly go over that. So just know this is, this is real. This is happening as we speak. It's Ezekiel 38 in, in effect. And this is the beginning of wars, the beginning of sorrows. Shalom.